reality begins within, as this is how the universe was created. And so to have peace, you have to go within yourself first by coming to peace with the difficulties from your past. And when you do that, you're learning to know yourself. And um, those emotions will come back again from those difficult times. But as you learn from them and make the most of it, they leave and are replaced with peace, knowledge, and wisdom. And those are blessings. So it you transform it into a teaching experience. And that opens up other memories that are nice, that you forgot. And that's to to heal you. That's part of your healing process. And that keeps you in the present moment as much as possible. And from dealing with the difficulties from your past, you learn that as you transform them into teaching experiences, that the difficulty is just part of a process and that when you complete it by learning from it and making the most of it, then it transforms into a blessing. Yeah? So you don't see it as a bad thing. And then you then you learn that mistakes and failures are are happen only when you give up. But when you learn from it and make the most of it, they transform yeah. They transform out of the status of being a mistake and failure into a teaching experience, which is a blessing. That's what you learn. So you learn that difficulties are not bad. Yeah, they may they may be hard, you know, that's what difficult means. But when you complete the process, it transforms into a blessing. And then other experiences are going to be just nice to begin with, and th- those you enjoy. Yeah, no matter how they come to you, no matter how how difficulties and blessings come to you, you treat all difficulties the same way. You make the most of it, and you learn from it, and that transforms into blessings, and you enjoy all blessings. And sometimes things will come as a blessing to begin with, and you enjoy it. It doesn't matter how it came; you enjoy it. It doesn't matter how the difficulty comes; you learn from it. Okay, so that prepares you. And that builds a healthy foundation so you don't see things as good and evil. And then when you also learn that nature is this this way and that things happen unexpectedly. Yeah. And from your past you see that too. So all this helps you to keep in the present moment and then that enables you to deal with future difficulties in a most effective way. Yeah? And now you're prepared. And then the good things that are going to still come to you, you are able to enjoy them even more than you ever did before. Things taste better. Yeah? All these nice things, they just feel better than they ever did before because you're at peace with your past. And then this influences you to communicate in a healthy way and to receive communication in a healthy way. You process it so if it's difficult, that it doesn't hurt you, it doesn't bother you. But if it's nice, that you soak it up and enjoy it and bond with the person who sent it to you. Yeah? I mean, you don't have to be, you know, boyfriend, girlfriend, <laughs> you know, but just appreciate it. Yeah? And say thank you. And that's going to make them feel good too. Yeah? And all this begins by perceiving the self as having four parts, which is the physical body, the mind, the emotional self, and the soul. Uh, these four parts are connected to each other. You can use a medicine wheel to represent that. If one part goes down, they all go down. If you only focus on one part, the other three go down and eventually bring the fourth part down. So either way, you get sick. And you lose the center, when that happens. The center is where they all connect. This is a sacred center because there's a piece of Grandmother Earth there. Literally, a piece of her soul is there. So when you live this healthy way that I described by learning from your difficulties and such, you're always going to be communicating from that sacred center. And then you see things differently. You see people as who they are on the inside, which means you take the time to get to know them, 
regardless of what they look like or what their gender is or whatever, you learn that there's unhealthy and healthy people in every race, language, and culture and spirituality. Yeah, You learn that. It's not the culture that's that's unhealthy. It's the person. Yeah, There's good Indians and there's bad Indians. That's just the way it is. But if people are choosing to live healthy, anybody can do that. It doesn't, you don't have to be a certain skin color to do that. And you're only responsible for your actions because reality begins within you. Your reality begins within you. So you're only responsible for your actions, not your ancestors. There's a lot of white people say, "Oh, I'm so I'm too, I feel so bad." You know, they, they stand in front of me and ball their heads off and say, "I'm so sorry for what my ancestors did to your ancestors." And you know, and it's like, "Hey, you can't take responsibility for that. That's their reality. Yeah, they have to deal with that. Even if they're, you know, even if this happened hundreds of years ago, it's not your responsibility." Just be the nice person you are and just do nice things. You know, live in a healthy way. Teach. Live by example. And think and meditate on these things. and Send healing energy to all people who are going through difficulty. That's being responsible. And what I explained here about healthy living, that's also being responsible to yourself. And then you're responsible to the universe. Yeah? So you have to be responsible to yourself first because that's where the foundation is, is inside of you. So before you can understand the universe out there, you have to understand the universe inside of you. And I just explained to you how you can do that. This is not a religion. This is not a, a philosophy. It's a way to live. And anybody can do it. You don't need to speak a certain language. You don't need ceremonies. You don't need a sacred item because that takes you away from your sacred center. What you need is you because you are a sacred item and your life is the ceremony. That's the reason. So that's what this show is based on. I mean, this is what Lakota Star Knowledge is based on. Uh, healthy living. It all begins within you. This is the foundation of how you can transform thoughts into matter, energy into reality, and things like that. It all begins within you. And um, like I said, you're communicating from that sacred center, and eventually you're going to see yourself as a human and not as an Indian or a Japanese or whatever. You're going to see yourself as ikche. Ikje wichasha if you're a man, or ikje wiyan if you're a woman. It's a human being. Our ancient Lakota star knowledge stories describe us as ikje, not Lakota. The word Lakota didn't even exist yet. In the beginning, it's ikje. Ikje oyate, the common people, the human beings. That's how it was the beginning. That's when most of the people were healthy. I mentioned something earlier. When somebody focuses only on one part of the self or one emotion or one thought and forces themselves to only feel that one emotion and think that one thought and um, take care of only a certain part of the self, then that person is dividing everything into two components. And that leads to duality. That leads to thoughts like, um, well, I'm better than you. I'm smarter than you. And if you do what I ask you to do, everything will go right. And um, the reason why is because I'm smarter than you. This is paternalism. And then they might say, well, my culture is better than yours. And that's ethnocentrism when you say, uh, See, the reason, what's wrong with your culture is this. If you, if you do it like us, then it's you'll be okay. That is ethnocentrism, and all that leads to racism. And then behind that is my way is the only way. That leads to dogma, where people say, 
if you're not with me, then you're against me. Or if you're not part of the solution, then you're part of the problem. That is duality. Is when when something only gives you two options, that is dualistic. Because, and it's unhealthy. Because Lakota Star Knowledge teaches there's going to be at least three. There's going to always be at least three perspectives to every situation. Sometimes there's more. But when you look for three, you will see the others. If there are others, yeah, sometimes it might just have just three. And you look at them and say, what can I learn from it? And Or maybe I can teach it something. Or maybe it confirms something that I already learned. Or maybe it's a blessing. I see you don't see it as good versus evil. Yeah? And people who are dualistic, they say, okay, I like this part, I reject the others, and because the others are bad, because I don't like them. See, the dualism is what creates good versus evil, heaven and hell, God versus Satan, demons versus angels. All that is a dualistic concept. And all of that is created by man. Nature is not dualistic. Yeah, and um, that's where we learned this from. That's where our ancestors learned this from. So when a person tries to force themselves to only feel one emotion or think one thought, you know, they become addictive eventually because they're always trying to force that feeling or thought, and so they end up becoming addictive, and that develops into either being an oppressor or a victim. That's all duality. When this happens, you know, they're avoiding emotions that make them feel uncomfortable. They hide from them. They deny them. And they say, I don't want to feel that, so I'm not going to do that. Their self-esteem starts dropping. Their self-worth starts dropping. And then they start getting inferiority complexes. So then that's why they say, you know, hey, we're smarter than you. You know, our way is the only way. You know, things like that. And they get emotional insecurities because since they're forcing themselves to only feel one emotion, they become addicted to it. And they totally are denying themselves blessings. Because remember, through difficulty come blessings when you learn from it, when you complete it. You, you learn from it, make the best of it. You get blessings. And dualistic people avoid difficulties. They hide from them. That means they hide from blessings. And duality exists all over the earth. It's not a white man thing. Indians were dualistic way before white people came. Why do you think Indians fought with each other? Because they look different. For those of us who are Indian, we can tell when somebody is most likely from the northwest or the northeast or the south or southwest. So we see the differences and we say, "Eh, they speak a different language, I don't like them. (laughs) I don't trust them. (laughs) See that? The duality there? Even though people from Europe think we're all the same (laughs) because we all have brown skin. Actually, we're not. We're not even the same. That's why we were at battle with each other for hundreds of thousands of years we were at battle with each other some tribes had alliances with each other but overall these battles were happening all over the North American and South American continents tribes are always fighting each other that is duality, that's not peace so that existed even among Indians before white people came so anyway that's duality there and how do we treat duality you treat it like a difficulty if it's something you have absolutely no experience with you check it out because you're going to learn from it now that way if you encounter it again in the future you automatically know what to do even if it's not exactly the same you still have a really good idea of what it's going to be like so you know what to do already But if it's something you never experienced before, then you learn it. 
and make the best of it. That's how you make it work for you. So that's healthy way of living. That's uh, which holds on you. That's health. So it's not about being good and thinking positive. Being good and thinking positive is going to lead to duality. Because you're saying that positive is good. And as soon as you do that, that makes negative bad. So you try to stay on one side. Which means you fall away from your sacred center. You're forcing yourself away from your sacred center when you only think positive. Or you only see things as good versus evil and then you choose good. Or maybe you choose evil. Some people do that. Some people choose evil and they choose to only feel hatred. That's duality too. So, when you become dualistic, you have that tendency to label everything as either good or bad. In in the quote star knowledge, you don't do that. You learn from it, or you enjoy it, or you're already at peace with it. There's always going to be at least three perspectives, but you never call it good versus evil. And these are the kind of people who are really peaceful. It's because of people like that that the earth didn't cleanse herself yet. But once those people start leaving the earth, then the earth is going to begin the cleansing. The next one. The earth is moving. The earth is alive. The earth is a being. And the sooner we acknowledge that and understand it and comprehend it and communicate with the earth the better off we are and then we can be influencing others in a healthy way just by the way we live because everything begins within the reality begins within a couple of weeks ago I was talking about um, you know a weather term I never heard before earthquake swarms I never heard of that before and um you know, I, I that's the kind of thing, you know, that you if you were to hear that, you you're not going to forget that earthquake swarm. Yeah, I've never heard that that expression before. So, um somewhere in Colorado, there were hundreds of these earthquakes going on. And so they call the earthquake swarms. And I'm like I that scares the shit out of me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but that's kind of scary in my opinion because um uh, it it is like I for one thing I've never heard of this before. And um and the, I I don't think this ever happened before. I mean, maybe it did, but they just downplayed it. Yeah, because they, maybe in the like for example, maybe in the 1950s, maybe maybe it did happen. Uh, but you know what's 1950s communication technology? Radios and TVs, yeah. And and maybe uh, people were just uh, you know just not into it, and and, and so maybe uh, the authorities at the time probably thought, well, well, if we can't feed it uh, on the earth, then why report it? Yeah. Uh, why why say anything if it's not doing anything? You know, uh, then don't don't report it. That's probably the, was the argument back then, but now we have all this technology, and uh, you know, and, and now you know people um, have access to a lot of things, and so that now it does get reported. And to me, I think it's scary because um, you know that that that's all coming from the the uh, plates, yeah, the the tectonic plates. The, you know what used to be a one giant continent broke up into a bunch of small continents that we see today and uh and islands and so forth and uh well those are volcanoes I uh, forgot about that um but um uh, even our star knowledge stories talk talk about that 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 happened um but it says that the play, uh what used to be east and west uh, Today is north and south, uh, 
uh, when when this uh, a great cleansing happened on the land, and uh, the earth called her children to safety. She told them where to go. Uh, uh, at that time, that happened. Only a few um, heard the heard her voice because the only way to hear of the earth is to to commu- when you're communicating from your sacred center, which is what I was talking about earlier. Yeah, that that uh, and, and that means you have to be living a healthy life. You know, taking care of yourself physically, mentally, spiritually as best as you can, so that uh, um, you know you come to peace in your life and and learn from difficulties. You know, and, and stuff like that. Communicate in a healthy way, helping others. You know, asking for help when you need help, and receiving communication in a healthy way. You know, all all this is a way of life, and when you live like that, you communicate from your sacred center. You don't communicate as a Indian or whatever your nationality is. You don't communicate from your skin color or your culture. You communicate as a grandchild of Grandmother Earth, meaning your sacred center. Those were the only people that heard her voice. And when this happened, there were just a few people, you know. There, there were just, you know, maybe, I don't know, maybe a few hundred thousand people, maybe several hundred thousand people uh, were the only ones that heard the voice. And um, billions more were um, were uh, killed they, they, because they were living a dualistic life. Yeah, And so because of their living in a dualistic life, they were not communicating from their sacred center. They're communicating from their skin color or their nationality or their their political uh, party or their their religion or whatever. They're communicating from there and not from their sacred center. So they didn't hear, and so they were they perished in this great destruction, in which the continent split up to what it is today. So. Um, you know how did that split happen? You know how how, how did this how did this occur? The Lakota Star Knowledge stories say that she has the help of we, the sun, um, Homi, the moon, uh, Wakia, the thunder being, Tate, the wind, Tate Tob, his four sons, the four direction winds, yeah, uh, Yum, the whirlwind. Um, you know, these are all these are some of the members of the Wakantanka. Yeah, that that they they are participating, they're helping the Earth because the Earth is a member of the Wakantanka. You see, this is another thing that I should clarify right away before I forget. Is that in Lakota Star Knowledge, Wakantanka is an organization, and there's more than one, and they're not. It's not about this is the good one and that's the bad one. No, remember because that's duality. To think like that is dualistic. So no, we have several Wakantaka groups, and it's not about good or bad. It's about how they work. Yeah, they work in different ways, and it's not about good and bad. Okay, so um, that that was the original definition. And then when when the uh, when the priests came, uh, you know, at the beginning of reservation time period. Um, you know, we we were put on reservations. We were not allowed to uh, perform our ceremonies. We were not uh, allowed to speak our language. So there, we're hit emotionally and uh, spiritually, right there. Yeah. And then, um, since we we were not allowed to have guns, and we were not allowed to leave the reservation, so that means, uh, you know, we were not allowed to eat what our bodies were used to. So. We were forced to eat um, really unhealthy foods that are that um, were given to us by the American government, and these foods were high in in in, in whatever that gave us diabetes, heart disease, and and, um, and hypertension and other diseases too. And so now we're hit physically, and that caused us to become weak minded. See, the four parts of the self. They all got hit. Yeah? Body, mind, heart, soul. So we became weak minded. And um you know the the uh, churches when they came on the reservation, 
um, they right away they they turned they found out who the medicine men and medicine women were and they declared them insane. There was a, a mental hospital built in Canton, South Dakota, and that's where these um, uh, medicine people were sent uh, because the priests said they were insane. And the reason why they did this is because they wanted the Indians to become Christians. So they have to take out all options that are not Christian. So that's why they sent them there. Yeah, They sent them there to die. Th these medicine people never left that mental hospital. They, they, they spent the rest of their lives there. They were abused. They were tortured. Yeah, they were left in rooms where you know they, they never cleaned the bathroom or anything. So they lived in horrible conditions, and they, they ended up dying there. They did this to Indians from all over America. They were sent to this one uh, mental hospital. And if you did not join a church and you were rebellious, they would say, well, you're crazy. Then they send you there too. So this is how how they really made it difficult yeah, for for, for Indian people. So uh, now we're like sheep. yeah, We're like uh, mindless sheep. And then so now the, they... Uh, in, you know the churches are established, and and at, during that time we you know we were living uh, far apart from one another on the reservation, so church gave a time for everybody to come together and fellowship again. So people started looking forward to going to church, and in that weak-minded state that we were in, we started to accept what the priests were saying, and the priests were saying that. Because the Indian ways conflict with the Bible, that means the Indian ways come from the devil, including our languages. So we started to accept that and started to speak English more. And then, try to keep us in, uh, they, they started taking some of our concepts and Christianizing them. And Wakantanka is one of those concepts. Remember what I said, this is, this is, there's several organizations that have that name. And what, what the priest did is they, they said they took that name, Wakantanka, and said it means God, the Christian God. So today, because of this brainwashing process, today most Indians believe Wakantanka means God. And some people will say Ate Wakantanka to mean Jesus, and Tugashila Wakantanka to mean God. Yeah, the, That's how they'll, they'll use it. So, um, uh, and that that we never said those things in, the, in in ancient times. So those are all Christian concepts. Yeah. So I have to say I have to add that in there that when I talk about Wakantaka, I'm not talking about God. I'm talking about one of these organizations. In this case, I'm talking about the first one. Yeah. So we had the these entities that they're all part of it. There's this, the weather is part of it. There's uh, animals that are part of it. Yeah? And uh, men and women are part of this organization. And uh, so all these guys helped the earth. And the earth is also part of this organization. So they all helped her to cleanse the earth from duality. To start all over again. Yeah, Because duality can only go so far. Then the Wakantanka reset things yeah so um, that's that's what happened they reset things so when I say uh, Wakia helped that means the thunders came and, and and started things yeah when I say we helped the fire um, came down and started to to um, you know burn everything when I say Yum helped the tornadoes and hurricanes these are entities, yeah. They they helped out too. When I when I talk about um, Ia, Ia also helped. Ia put in motion along with Maka, the Earth, these earthquakes. Yeah, and then we have who else do we have involved here? Um, the Chate, the winds, and his sons, the the four winds, the four direction winds. They all come into effect too, blowing, blowing yum all over, blowing the fires all over, mix that, mixing that in with constant rain and and um, 
you know, causing flooding, fires, earthquakes, hurricanes, and they really worked hard to cleanse the earth. And and when the when it was when they were done, the earth was broken up into what we see today. In the beginning, it was just one continent, but because of what you know, of humans becoming, you know, incredibly dualistic that billions of humans were dualistic and only, you know, a few hundred thousand were still living the star knowledge way. And the, and the ones that survived were that few hundred thousand because they're communicating from their sacred center so they knew where to go for safety. Yeah, The earth had several areas on the earth where they could go for safety and that nothing would happen to them. And that's where they went. And everybody else, they didn't hear the voice because they were dualistic. They only saw things as this or that. The people who were saved, they saw things as this, that, and the other. And that sometimes there's more than one other. Yeah. So, um, as this process of cleansing began, you know, the, the, it just, all kinds of things are happening on this earth. You have to imagine, you know, that that it, the things happen in, to such a degree that it, it 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 destroys, you know, the surface of the earth, and that uh, when it's over, it's all brand new. It's starting over again. Yeah. So that's why I said when I when I first heard about these earthquake swarms, that kind of scared me there, because to me that's the fuse is lit. Yeah. That that that. Just because we don't feel them, it doesn't mean it doesn't mean we shouldn't worry. Yeah, it's just like let's say let's say you know you you touch something and it leaves a mark on you, but you say oh it doesn't doesn't hurt, so I'm just gonna let it go. <laughs> and then, then a month later, you have some kind of virus that's eating up your flesh. Yeah. And then, and then, and then, next thing you know, they're chopping off your arm, and and it's still growing. They they thought they caught it, they thought it was all in your your hand, so they chopped off your arm, you know. They thought it was just in your hand, and so you know to make sure it doesn't spread further, they go several joints up and they cut your arm off, thinking they got it. Then it turns out it's still in you. So then it's it, it they have to cut off, they cut into the side of your body where that arm is missing, so you're it, almost to the neck. They have to cut all that part off, yeah, all all, all, all the bone that is there, you know, where the arm bone, the, the shoulder bone here, they have to cut that off, and then finally it stopped. So you look like half a person, yeah, but you don't have the virus anymore, at least that flesh-eating virus. It took one of my cousins like that. Yeah. This, who knew? Yeah. Something like that would happen on a reservation. Yeah. Because I don't know if you if you remember that about ten twenty years ago, that was going around uh, several parts in, of the world, and and my cousin got that, and um, they 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 cut her hand off, and uh, oh no, they cut they got, it was in her hand, so they cut up to her elbow, yeah, to one joint up. And they thought that they thought they stopped it, and here it showed up on her her uh, forearm, no, her, her bicep. So they cut up deep into her shoulder, and they and and finally it, they they got it. So for I don't know, she lived another ten years, I think, and it appeared again, and that's what it took her. Yeah, it's crazy. It's it's, it's it, you know, it's, it's, you have to pay attention. <laughs> Yeah, you 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 see the first mark. You better go in right away, and 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 get that looked at instead of just saying, "Oh, it's not hurting me." I'll just let it go. <laughs> <laughs> you see what I mean? You 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 see a uh, you 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 see or feel or whatever uh, something out of the ordinary. You better pay attention to it because if you don't it you know it it's going to get bigger it's going to and, and it's going to catch you off guard and next thing you know you're a goner because you didn't pay attention 
at the beginning. Some some uh, some cancers are like that too. There's some cancers that are curable. You know, if you if you get it fast enough. That's why with women, they're always encouraging, uh, you know, to get your your breasts examined regularly after you reach a certain age because it's important to catch it in its early stages because if you can catch it you could save your life yeah and and that that's that's so that's why it's important to do that now if i think if you're a healthy woman that's what you're going to do you're going to make that a regular thing because this, you know you 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 want to do if you can do something to prevent something from happening then you should do it you have that choice to do it or not do it, and it's up to you. And you have, if you say, "Oh, it's just an inconvenience," then well, you better, you have to accept the consequences of, of you know, if you get it and it's too late, and um, then you just have to accept the consequences. There's no, it's too late to say, "I should have did this," "I should have did that." You just have to learn how to live with it, and I guess you're going to die. Sorry, you know that might sound really harsh, but you you have a chance yeah you do have a chance why push away that opportunity to live so uh i think i think uh you know that's something that really needs to be looked after so with men i think what is it our prostrates that we have to get checked out or something like that so that you know that's something i'm on the ball with yeah cuz if we if we have the 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 uh the technology and the uh you know the the know how to do something about it then we should do something about it we owe that to ourselves yeah so um that's what i'm saying you you, you should really be aware of these things and and as soon as something out of the ordinary appears you have to um check it out get i get i got a good story for you here I have a good friend from Florida. Her name was Jerry. Jerry is a, a beautiful soul. Uh, she's a, she's a Cherokee Indian, a real Cherokee. Because uh, a lot of a lot of people say they're Cherokee and they're really not. You know, because in the 1960s and 70s, the Cherokee the, the nation in Oklahoma they lowered their standards to uh, be enrolled, and a lot of a lot of Poor people wanted to uh, enroll in their in that tribe so they could get benefits from the government. Yeah, so a lot of people they just you know they say yeah my great grandmother was Cherokee princess and and so they was oh okay so they they didn't even require you to provide any documentation. So the, there's a joke in the Indian world that a lot of blonde haired blue eyed people you know, they say they're Cherokee. Because they say their great grandmother was a Cherokee princess, and there's no such thing. The Indian world does not have that concept of kings, queens, prince, and princess. That does not exist. That's a, a, a European way of looking at things. Yeah, but they got enrolled anyway. So as a result, in the 1970s and 80s, they kind of, the Cherokees kind of became a joke. And uh, then I think it was the 1980s they elected a, 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 their first female a chief, and she cleaned up the, their uh, history. I mean, she uh, not history. Uh, she cleaned up their act. She did away with those rules and made them more strict, like the other tribes have. That now you have to have documentation. So she. She had a team go through their tribal registry, and they they elimin- eliminated anybody who had no documentation. So they cleaned them. They cleaned their reputation. Yeah, they fixed their reputation today. So, but back then it used to be a joke. Yeah. So, and she knew that. So, she's making their them become more. Uh, what do you call it? Um, in a better light, the other Indians see them in a better light. Yeah, so that that's why I said Jerry is a real Cherokee. Uh, she her father is is uh, from Oklahoma, I think. And uh, so anyway, Jerry, she's she's a cool gal, and 
she, this was a, uh, I was going through a hard time, and that's when I met Jerry. And uh, Jerry really helped me out through that hard time. Uh, back in 1996, she really helped me out. She was, she was ready to to uh, see. She lived in Phoenix before, and I was going through a difficulty there. So she said, "If you need a place to stay, she said, call me right away." She said, "I have, I have friends there, and I told them about you, and they're willing to take you in." She said, and it's like, wow, that's amazing, yeah. See, that's that's how Jerry is. She's really a, a good lady. And um, anyway, as we're getting, you know, to know each other, she, I, I just, just this lady that is just cool. Yeah, I really like this lady. And one time we were sending goofy pictures to each other. Yeah, we'd take funny pictures of ourselves and <laughs> send it to each other. <laughs> and she sent me one um, with uh, she, she, she's a, uh, uh, she's into physical fitness and and she sent me one with a. Uh, uh, she said, "Look, here's here I am in my new bikini, and, she, <laughs> and she's really pretty, yeah. But she posed in a really funny way. <laughs> it's like, oh man, that made me laugh. And and then you know, and then uh, years later, she said, David, um, do you still? She called me up and she said, David, do you still have that photo?" Of that, you know, that funny pose I did in the bikini, and I said, "Yeah." I said, uh, "Can you scan that and send that to me?" She said, uh, um, "I went." She said, "I went to a, 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 a got a physical checkup, and um, the doctor sees something on my body, and I'm trying to figure out when it appeared." She said, "I, I never saw it before." She said, "So can can you look at that photo and see?" And uh, and then scan it to me. And we're going to take a look at it. So I said, okay. So I said, I scanned it and sent it over. And luckily, it that mark wasn't there. Yeah, that part where you could see this this uh, this it was on, somewhere on her skin. And um, she didn't have any. Uh, she didn't know. You know, she wanted to know how far back. You know that she didn't have it. So I, I sent it to her right away, and I, and I, I emailed it to her really fast, and uh, and so she got it, and they, and her and her doctor looked at it, and they said, well that's good, it doesn't show there. They said, so that means we have a good chance here, and uh, she had a, a scare. Yeah, it, it, it could have been a, if 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 that mark was there at that time, um, she could have had some kind of cancer. That um, probably would have been a little bit too late to do anything about. That's why she was really scared. So, uh, see, it's 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 a good thing. It's it's a good idea to check yourself out regularly. Yeah, for 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 things like that. So, it, a, a funny picture saved her life. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> this is a crazy story. <laughs> <laughs> so you see what I mean concerning uh you know that that pay attention to things yeah cuz even even if on the surface it doesn't look like anything but yet you still feel something then you should you should you know you owe it to yourself to get that checked out whatever it is so why not be that way to the earth too yeah so that's why I said when I heard of these these earthquake swarms that there were, what was it? There were 300 to 400 of them that happened over a period of time. It's like, like, uh, like, like something getting ready to blow, but they said, Oh, it's too far under the earth. It can't do anything. But what if it can? I mean, this is like a fuse starting to burn. And eventually it's going to get bigger. What if it's just starting and it's going to get bigger? Do you see what I'm saying? That that's why something like that kind of got me concerned, and and I never heard that term before: earthquake swarms. And we're hearing all these new terms. Northern Ireland and Scotland got something called a weather bomb. 
and I didn't read that story yet, but I looked at their pictures and I'm like, whoa, they're getting some 144 mile an hour winds. Yeah, it shut down uh, electricity to uh, several thousands of uh, homes. And uh, it really raised hell up there. Remember, they had flooding. Remember, there's some parts of of, of England where um, the ground is really soft. When the water, it soaks up the water and then it builds something, like a floor or something like that. Because once once it soaks up with water, and then so the water can't go any deeper. So then it raises, it rises, and a whole towns and 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 streets and neighborhoods were being flooded. And that was new. I never heard that before. Yeah, and um, you know, and and then uh, and then a few years ago there were these earthquakes happening in uh, in uh, Mexico, and and the the aftershocks were sometimes more powerful than the uh, the original. Earthquake, so I wouldn't I wouldn't classify that as an aftershock. Maybe it is. I don't know. But when you have an earthquake that seven point something on the Richter scale, and then they say the aftershock is eight point something, that kind of sounds like another earthquake to me. And uh, one of my friends, Marta, um, she has a friend there. Marta's from Spain, and she has a, a friend in Mexico who lives in that area and. And she was telling Marta that people think it's the end of the world. Huh? People are, are are actually heading to the hills. She said they're they're trying to. And the news is not reporting that they reported the earthquakes, the initial strike, and then they let it go. And the news was not saying that the earthquakes are still happening. You see, the media is is a liar. Yeah, so it, and it is. You have to remember that just because it's not getting reported does not mean it's not happening. We can't be in denial like that. Yeah. So all these events, pay attention and start thinking about, you know, what I said tonight concerning this is communicating from your sacred center. Yeah. So so you have a chance. You never know. Yeah. Things are happening now. So it's a it's a family tradition. We have to start. And we carry it down, so maybe, maybe you know, our descendants will thank us when they get saved from that next cleansing. Well, we have to start now. <laughs>